Welcome to Trains 21. In addition to this YouTube channel, you can also find us online at trains21.org and trains21.com. Okay, now we can talk. At about 0800 AM on May 2nd, 2020, about one hour before we saw this train, southbound train 11Z slid down and into town behind two ACs and a DC, guiding just over 10,000 tons of freight and just under 10,000 feet of freight train over the Main Avenue Bridge on Scranton's north side. In today's mix was a new family of freight car that's been showing up lately all over America. AIMX is the reporting mark of the American Iron and Metal Corporation. American Iron and Metal is a family-owned Canada-based company founded in 1936 in Montreal, Quebec. Recognized as one of North America's most sophisticated metal recyclers and specializing in the recovery and recycling of scrap metal byproducts, AIM has evolved into a successful and multifaceted company with a global footprint which includes more than two dozen facilities in Canada, New England, El Paso, Miami, Scandinavia, even Poland. Another Amex car that's been showing up after a seemingly long hiatus are these beige high side bathtub style gondolas. I don't know what they're being used for in 2020, but in the days of the Canadian Pacific Sunbury subdivision, these cars carried construction and demolition debris from the North Jersey and New York City metro region to places unknown for disposal. Another steel hauling gondola that's common in the railroad business of today are those of the Schnitzer Steel Industry reporting mark SSEX. Like AIM, SSI has over two dozen locations all over North America. The new AIM gondola cars, and just for the record, they are called gondolas, not gondolas. There are no gondolas on American railroads. The only gondolas I know of are in Venice. Now, where was I? Okay. In the tradition of the Amex cars are the older, but similar, Emex cars. EAMX is a reporting mark for the Everest Rail Car Services Company, a rail car leasing company based in Bentonville, Arkansas, which is also the home base of the giant Walmart Corporation. And although Emex gondolas are a common sight in the region, the ones that always stood out to me were those that were leased to the Sullivan Scrap Metal Company out of Holyoke, Massachusetts. 
With three locations in Holyoke and Worcester, it's rare in this day and age to see such a conspicuous corporate identity on the sides of modern-day rail cars. But as Sullivan states on their website, the term family business is not taken lightly. Another reason for seeking out the Sullivan Scrappers was the rare pink breast cancer awareness car number 5017. The pristine pretty and pink scrap gun was captured by Philip Turner in Grand Rapids, Michigan on March 1, 2010, just months before our previous CP train 257 rolled through town. And to show you how fast things can change, we caught up with the 5017 five years later in 2015. No longer clean and tidy, no longer working for Sullivan Scrap, the faded outcast was spending its days moving metal for the Metro Bet Corporation, which is yet another scrap metal company that's based out of Montreal, Canada. In video T168, we took a detailed look at some of the small fleets of rare pink freight cars that are shuffling around North America today. We talked about the pink rolling stock of the TTX Corporation, Halliburton, and Hub Group. There's a link to that video in the description box and in the pinned comment, just in case you missed it. On March 26th of this year, northbound train 14R had a brand new spick and span TTX boxcar that was wrapped in a shiny pink shell. TTX is bringing awareness to millions of people with its pink boxcar project and the Hub Group Container Company is doing the same with their Cause Container campaign. Later in the summer, I caught something that I've been hoping to catch for a long, long time. An authentic pink Clem Co-op grain hopper. And in the spirit of this incredibly rare catch, here's some info on Iowa Grain Co-ops. The oldest active cooperative elevator in the United States is in Marcus, Iowa, a small town with just over 1,000 people. Formed in 1887, the cooperative's goal was to provide farmers a place to competitively sell their grain. At the time, elevators were mostly privately owned, with operators able to pay low prices to producers for harvested grain while making fantastic profits when the grain reached market. Farmers from that part of the state gathered to collectively start their own elevator by the railroad, providing an alternative for the sale of grain. And thus began an era of cooperative agriculture that exists to this day. Co-ops have been important to the development of agriculture in the United States, and in Iowa maybe even more so. I don't think you can understate the importance of their role in the growth of agriculture in Iowa. Co-ops operate differently than just strict profit maximization. They service the rural areas where investor-owned firms might not decide to have assets where no competition exists. These co-ops grew up in the state to fill a need for producers to gain access to missing goods and services. Cooperatives maintain assets in rural areas that investor-owned firms wouldn't. In many cases, they are the reason we still have local services like banks in these rural areas. The co-ops also help ensure that rural services are maintained in the areas their members live. There were a number of co-ops that had their own cars in very visible colors like pink or bright green or bright red. It had to be fun to watch these colorful cars in the various freight and grain trains. Nowadays, we look for different trailers or containers in a variety of colors, and for those interested in nostalgia, the elevator tracks at the Clem Elevator were ripped up years ago, but the Iowa Northern now operates the line between Belmont and Forest City, and Union Pacific still serves the elevator at Fordhamville, or at least it did in 2018. On a later day, Monday, November 9 to be exact, I caught the Halliburton Company's number 7995 while perched on the Green Ridge Street overpass. My timing could not have been better as it was less than five minutes after I snapped these photos that the DL train moved south and into town and onto the Norfolk Southern for the one mile reverse ride down to Taylor Yard. From there, it was scattered to the wind. The 7995 is one of a small group of two bay covered hoppers owned by Halliburton that are painted pink in honor of breast cancer awareness and research. It falls into the ranks of those in the 7900 and 8000 number series and marks the third one that I've caught in the region. The first one being the 7996 which I caught nearly five and a half years ago in June 2015 on the Canadian Pacific train 458. If you look in the description, you'll find links to various other videos that were referenced in this video, so make sure that you check those videos out. It'll give you a better understanding of what you saw in this video. And if you like this video, then please hit the like button because it lets YouTube know that this video is worth sharing with other people. And if you're not a subscriber to this channel, then make sure to become a subscriber today by hitting that big red button at the bottom of the video. This is your boarding pass for our journey into 21st century railroading. And when you subscribe, make sure that you click the bell. Doing this makes sure that you get all notifications every time that we upload new videos. Lastly, if you'd like to support this channel in addition to what I just talked about, 
There's a PayPal link in the description and in the pinned comment. A buck a month can go a long way, and five bucks goes five times as far, which works out nice. But if you can't support with money, never fear. Likes, comments, and shares, they're always free. For Trains 21, call me AC.